Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir al from easymedicaldevice.com. And today we will talk about GDPR. So I'm sure you are asking yourself, what is GDPR? So for that, I invited a guest, which is uh, Jovan Stevovic, uh, who is the CEO of Chino.io. So it will help us to understand what is GDPR and also the connection between GDPR and the MDR. So, Jovan, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Thanks, Monir. Thanks for inviting me. So, Jovan, just quick introduction of yourself first, maybe, uh, for the audience so that they really understand uh, who you are. And then we can really uh, jump to the, this, um, this topic, which is a great topic that people really, really like about GDPR. So, please, just give yeah. an introduction. You're very optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about regulations. <laughs> it's not really a nice topic. Yeah, so I'm, uh, as you said, I'm the CEO and one of the two co-founders of Chinoyo. Uh, Chinoyo is an Italian uh, company, five years and a half of the market. We started before GDPR, actually. We started in 2014 uh, when uh, some issues regarding privacy and security of health applications were discovered, some analysis. And we said, okay, how we can help application developers, entrepreneurs, and also big companies to develop their applications and making sure that they are secure and compliant with privacy laws. So, so we created a platform, so our, our, a platform for developers, and this platform uh, offers a set of tools and modules to make health applications GDPR and also HIPAA compliant for US market. Okay. So uh, I think then you have uh, all the information needed for this audience. So if you are really developing uh, an application or uh, something, so uh, a digital application, and uh, you are then uh, needed, you need, if I can say, some GDPR knowledge or GDPR tips, then uh, Jovan will really help us for that. So Jovan, as I've said first, maybe there are a lot of people that really don't know what is GDPR. So can we first mention the acronym? What is GDPR and what is also the link to the MDR? Yeah, I'm quite optimistic, actually, that people heard about GDPR. I'm sure they heard year. about it. but uh... <laughs> Last year, they, they received a lot of emails from companies saying, we updated our proxies and so on to be GDPR compliant. Uh, GDPR, the, the European General Data Protection Regulation, a law uh, applicable in, uh, mandatory in all uh, states in Europe, um, it defines uh, general principles on data protection. So data protection is not uh, data security that much, it's not technical, but it's not also privacy. It's data protection. So what people and what companies need to implement to make sure that a product, a website, a mobile application, a device, a, a, device, a mobile device, is uh, compliant and, and protects uh, the user's data in a proper way, gives the users the proper rights. So from last year, it has been approved, and now it's, uh, it's um, one of the uh, worldwide references for good practices on how, what are the subject rights, what are the people rights when they use a product. They should give given the right to download their data, to port their data on other application, to ask for deletion of the data, and, and so on. But... Um... So GDPR is really, or actually, it's really European based. So it's really the law of Europe. Uh, so US is not kind of, is not following GDPR. They are not asking, I mean, they are asking if they have customers in Europe, but mainly yeah. it's really only for the European Union actually. Yeah, it's true that we received a lot of emails uh, saying yeah. to us, uh, are you accepting to receive emails from us? Uh, if you yeah. are not, you can uh, unsubscribe, etc., etc. just to be sure that we have really asked the permission uh, to get on the list of, of some of the organizations and for them to prove that, yes, we opted in. So we said, yes, we want to receive those emails and then uh, they are, if I can say, in the safe side. Uh, so yeah. what is then the link with the MDR? So why are we talking about GDPR? Uh, when we talk also about MDR? Well, yeah, so the, the link is uh, basically that it's not only about, about privacy policies. This is what we have seen in 2018. The GDPR is, is about how you design and develop an application to make sure that those rights are implemented properly. And MDR um, makes reference to GDPR and to, to data protection regulations, even the, the next ones that will be approved, like the e-privacy regulation, 
it mentions uh, around 10 times in the in the regular in the mdr text okay. uh, as a as a mandatory thing as a mandatory regulation to observe when designing and developing an application so mdr quality and and delivering the the promises about medical treatments and medical aspects means also security and privacy and compliance in terms of how you manage the data so it's included okay and um, now um, if i am a medical device manufacturer i should i think if i understood well consider gdpr if i'm starting to manipulate data of other people or patients or gathering information from outside the company um, and uh, storing them inside the company so is it correct yes so as you pointed out previously so the gdpr is mandatory every time you start managing personal data of european citizens so also for us companies who are selling their products to european market so they are clearly selling the targeting european users european citizens they they need to uh, be gdpr compliant if they collect personal data and personal data then there is you know the definition of what is personal what is health data and etc cetera, etc cetera. So um, in terms of uh, manufacturers now, as they are developing their application or developing their tools uh, to gather those data, um, what are some kind of technical requirements that they need to, um, to understand or they need to implement uh, to be on the safe side? Well, uh, unfortunately, there are quite many. Uh, okay. For example, there are eight subject rights. So subject rights like We've heard about right to be forgotten. So you need to you need to have processes and tools inside your application, inside your service that you're offering to track the requests from citizens to delete the data and to implement that properly. So the data needs, needs to be deleted from backups, uh, from uh, from all applications, or even from paper if you have some data on the paper. So this just one right created really a panic uh, in, okay. in in the application development community because. It, It, it was a lot about you know design and implementation. So th then there is uh, consent, right to consent, uh, consent tracking. There is uh, right to object the processing, limit the processing, uh, limit the pro profiling, and so on. So there are eight subject rights. But then there is security. There is uh, there is pseudonymization that needs to be implemented. And there is audit trail and so on. So quite many aspects that needs to be considered to make sure that an application is is GDPR compliant. So. Um do you have i mean when you are developing an application um i think do you need a lawyer to help you understand all this or what is exactly the 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 thing that a manufacturer should consider when he starts to make this application is it a regulatory affairs person is it a, what is what kind of type of people he needs if i can say to be on the safe side well definitely definitely somebody that has knowledge about gdpr and legal aspects so it can be a lawyer or it can be a consultant uh, typically we see these two type of figures helping companies to collect the requirements the challenge is to collect legal requirements and transfer them into technical implementations into design of the application so one uh, definitely one most important characteristic about gdpr it has to be considered from the analysis and design of the of the app, of the software okay While MDR can be considered a bit further, a bit once the prototype is created, once you 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 don't know you start testing with users and so on, GDPR has to be considered from the beginning in the implementation and in design. So typically, how companies do, they work with lawyers, consultants, and they try to implement everything by themselves, and that's this is. Uh, costly typically and time-consuming activity and for example that's why we exist at Chinoyo. we, we as, okay. a, as a company we try to help on that okay so yeah. um, I, I, this is something as, as we mentioned that didn't exist before uh, so before what it was what March last year or May last year I cannot remember um, yes so May 2015 May last May. year yeah. uh, so before that we didn't need that now we need to if I can say update all our applications or all our softwares to implement that um, do you know if there is if it is a high cost if i can say to do all those changes or it's uh, maybe something that is just a form to include or just a, a small box to include on your software it's a tough question i mean it's a tough it's a it's a, it's a painful it's a painful topic why because updating existing applications and to implement those rights and and criterias It's really complicated. It's really time-consuming and costly. So what we are seeing is that companies with 
larger applications, older applications are introducing some patches, some minor changes. But those that are building applications right now from scratch, the new new kind of services and so on, they are considering GDPR from, from the beginning. So there is this, uh, let's say, later catch up on technical aspects. So initially we've seen policies updated, everybody received a lot of emails, but now people, companies are implementing uh, practically in new applications uh, in in older it's a bit it's a bit harder but um if i understand well because here we talk about mdr mentioning a lot of time gdpr um, can we say that even if mdr is not here we have to be compliant to gdpr well uh, even even if you're not mdr classified let's say you're if you're not a medical device in class one or two or three but you collect it, uh, personal data or health data, even even worse, health data. You need to be definitely so. I think uh, users' data must be must be GDPR compliant. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah, I think it's really an interesting topic, and uh, I think there is a lot of um, of um, also questions from patients actually about um, what people are doing with my data. Um, am I protected? Can I get them back? Can I destroy them uh, so that they cannot use them? I mean, there is a lot of those questions um, that patients or people are asking uh, because I think they are also afraid that those data are used by some organizations uh, in a wrong way. I'm, I'm thinking mainly about, because it's always those ones that uh, they are telling me it's about insurance. Uh, if they know that I'm not healthy, they will maybe increase my uh, my fee and this and that. So I want to know them not to know about uh, my situation. So this is a lot of things like that that are, that are I mean, this is a lot of comments I receive uh, regarding that. Uh, but uh, actually, what uh, what are you exactly doing at Chino.io? How how can you help the the medical device community uh, to be compliant, or what kind of service also you are really offering to them? Well, as I mentioned, you know, implementing those uh, those subject rights or data security and and designing and and, and implementing and delivering properly a GDPR compliant application takes a lot of uh, energies, costs, and time, uh, and at the end, it's also very risky. It's very risky if in case of your in case of failure, because we have we have seen very high fines, up to 20 million, you know, or 4% turnover. But then, <clears throat> as you mentioned, users are more and more aware about uh, <clears throat> the data, and uh, the companies, in case of errors, can make a lot of uh, uh, can 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 have a lot of damage in terms of trust and reputation. So what we do at Chinoyo, we prevent those risks. We eliminate those risks by delivering a technology that makes health applications GDPR compliant and HIPAA compliant also for US market by, by technology, by design, by default. And by using this technology, companies can also save a lot of time and costs. So that's a, it's a technology used uh, by developers and, and to, to uh, implement data security, implement consent tracking, implement audit trails, implement the right to be forgotten and many other features. Okay, um, so um, I suppose that um, your main customers are application developers or software developers. Uh, so um, do you have also some customers that uh, um, ask you some support for non-medical device um, application, non-medical device softwares? Well, we, we decided to focus on healthcare because we love healthcare. We, we are passionate about it and we know the market. So we tried, uh, tried always to focus on that, but uh, the sensitive data uh, or, or like healthcare data, there are also in other sectors like finance, okay. uh, like th there are different types of, of sensitive data, like racial data, uh, religious, biometric, uh, uh, union membership, et cetera, et cetera. So in all those categories where there's a need for further protection, encryption, pseudonymization, then we can help with our technology. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where then can people follow up with you? Where can they know more about you and maybe contact you for giving them your services? Well, the best way is to, to download material on our website, okay. www.chino.io, um, or to write us uh, via email or contact us via, also via our website, there is contact forms and ask any question, happy to, to help. But we try to give a lot of material for free to developers, to the community, to educate them. Because the main issue is that G uh, GDPR was approved, but not many technical guidelines on how to implement it, or not, not many cases have been out there. So we try to, to be on top and, and create this material. 
And I see that on your website, I saw, and I saw also that on LinkedIn that you are posting that you have also an ebook that you are um, offering uh, so that people really can uh, see the whole flow um, for uh, considering a software, what is inside the software, how to classify a software also. So um, it's kind of um, uh, some a good, if I can say, things to read for people that maybe have no clue what is the medical device regulation for software because you are just uh, summarizing all the information that are really important for them. Yeah, we try to create different ebooks actually. We try to create one ebook about explaining what is different type of data, private, uh, personal data, sensitive data, health data, anonymous data, pseudo-anonymous data. And all these categories, this is really interesting. There is one ebook about that. There is one about GDPR HIPAA requirements and how you can, what, what are those requirements, how to implement them. And recently, uh, we, we observed a huge demand for MDR related questions and answers. Uh, if you are MDR certified application, can you use cloud, for example? And then we try to answer those questions in our, our ebook. So there is one specific on MDR. They're beautiful, so check them. They are, uh, they are very well designed and they so, took a yeah, lot so of uh, efforts and iterations to integrate them. Yeah, so if you want to know some answers to the question yeah. that uh, <laughs> you have just uh, mentioned, so please download the ebook, uh, get a free access to it. I will put anyway the links on the show notes, but you can also go to chino.io uh, and you will see all what um, what Jovan is proposing for, for you. Um, I think it's, um, it's also important that uh, when you are starting a development of a, of a product like that or an application, uh, instead of saying maybe I will wait until the end to uh, start thinking about all the regulatory aspect, maybe just having maybe a, a one hour or a 30 minutes discussion with uh, with Jovan can help you maybe to go uh, more further and it can really help you to accelerate the development of your product and being on the right way because, yeah, I think we had an episode with um, uh, with Bill Stam um, who, where we discussed about the fact that, yeah, there are some companies that are developing their products until the end and then they are starting to do documentation, which is really the wrong way to do it and, uh, uh, and it's something that we try also to avoid. So yeah, start from the beginning and start to ask yourself from the beginning uh, if you if there is some regulation that you have to uh, to follow. Okay. Yeah, the the worst. If I can add, you know, the worst thing is to have a technological depth. You know, documentation. It's true that people write documentation at the end, and it should be written at the beginning. I mean, doing right while writing, while doing, while designing. But the technological depth. The errors that you can make, at the, the errors that you make at the beginning, you're going to bring them with you till the Until end. Until the end, exactly. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> yeah, and this will be more and more painful the more time goes on, the more features you add on your application and so on. So exactly, so the and we'll is to then for, uh, make a remediation and correct everything. So it's, uh, it's really yeah. a, pain in a, a pain. So, Okay, so Jovan, thank you for your help. Thank you for all the information you provided. I think yeah, people will really... Um, like that, uh, and specifically people that are developing application. And please contact uh, Jovan, contact, uh, go to chino.io uh, just to uh, really understand what are the requirements so that you are developing um, your application right the first time. Okay, Jovan, so thank you for your help and I uh, wish you a nice day. Thanks for having me. <laughs>